When we add buttons or switches or sliders to our iOS applications, they just work out of the box. We just drag that blue line in Xcode and everything just works for us. In my last video, I covered the basics of UIKit and how to use UI views. So if you haven't already, I recommend you check out that video first and I'll put a link in the description. In this video, I'm gonna build on top of that and show you how to use UI controls with IB actions to respond to touch events in your applications. So I'm gonna start by creating a brand new button just as a type of UI button, which is a UI view. So I can just add it directly as a sub view here by calling add sub view. But if I check out the interface for a UI button, I'll see that it's actually a subclass of UI control, which is a subclass of UI view. Quick sidebar, UI kit was developed like 11 years ago before Swift existed and it was all developed in Objective-C. Now Swift prefers using structs and protocols for polymorphism, but in Objective-C we used subclassing, which means we get really long class hierarchies. So in iOS, you'll see a lot of things done in not a Swift way, but in an Objective-C way. And that's just because this was all developed way before Swift. So UI button is a subclass of UI control, which is a subclass of UI view, which is a subclass of UI responder, which is a subclass of NS object, which is the base class of any object that we create in Objective-C. All of these details matter if you're an iOS developer developing with UI kit, but right now we're just gonna focus on the button and the fact that it's a UI control. So a button is still a UI view, that's how I can add it as a sub view here, but it's also a UI control. Pretty much any UI view that handles user input, so there's things like buttons, sliders, switches, these are all gonna be subclasses of UI control. To get a sense of what makes a UI control special, I'm gonna switch over to the storyboard and drag a couple of controls into the screen. If I select just the normal view here and go over to the connections inspector, I'll see an option for creating an outlet. But if I instead select a control like a button, I get this long list of events that I can connect to this control. And if I select any other control, I get these exact same options. And all of these events here are basically just tracking the different ways that a user can interact with these controls using just their finger, just touching the controls. So anytime something meaningful happens, so someone pushes a button or slides the slider, one of these events will get triggered within our code and we can respond to that event using Swift. If I open up the assistant editor here, I can create a new action from the button to the view controller. I'll just call this do something. Now, any code that I write in here will get executed when I push the button. And that's because this button is connected to the view controller by its touch up inside event. And that event happens or gets triggered when I push down on a button and then bring my finger up while remaining inside the button. And this is the normal expected behavior of a button. Uh, we want something to happen when we lift our finger off of the button. And this allows us to change our mind. So if I push down on a button and I drag my finger away from that button and then let go, that's not going to trigger this action because I didn't intend to push that button. So this is the default behavior for any button but I can also add an action to any of these other events. So for example, I've created another action for the button and I've called it touch down, touch down. Uh, and and uh, if I wanna connect this to the button, I can select the button and from the different events that I have here on the right, I can select, uh, in this case, I want touch down. So I can drag straight from touch down into that event. And now when I touch down on the button, that action will get triggered. And when I lift up from the button, the touch up inside action will get triggered. So touch down, touch up inside, touch down, touch up inside, touch down, drag, exit, and no touch up inside event gets triggered. And this makes a lot of sense for a button, but it wouldn't make much sense for a slider. I don't wanna know when a slider is tapped like a button. I wanna know when a slider's value changes. So if I go to the slider and I drag to make an action in my view controller, um, I'll call this uh, slider changed. 
I can see right here that the default value is value changed rather than touch up inside. So I can select at the moment that I create the action, I can select it from this drop down menu, or later on I can go and select it from this uh, set of options in the right here. Uh, so right now I'm just gonna leave it at its default value, which is value changed, which makes sense for a slider. I don't wanna know when it's tapped, I wanna know when its value's changed. So if I connect that, I can now see every time that the value in the slider has changed. So now if I slide that slider, I can see value change getting printed out a ton. Uh, but this isn't super helpful. I probably wanna know what the value is. If we look at this slider, I can see that its value is gonna be anywhere between zero and one. And I probably wanna know what that value is. So I could create an outlet to this slider and reference it that way. But if we just open the view controller file, we can see that every action is actually sent this thing called a sender. And the sender can be anything, but it's gonna be the thing that is connected to the action. So in these two cases, it's gonna be the button. And in this case, it's gonna be the slider. So I'm actually allowed to change this to be any type. So in this case, I'll change it to UI slider. And I can even change the name here to slider instead of sender. And this will work as long as I only connect this action to a UI slider or a subclass of UI slider. And this allows me to grab the value straight from the slider that the action came from, which is a lot more helpful than having a sender of type any. So now if I drag this, I can see yeah, anywhere between zero and one that's the value of the slider. Now I could do something meaningful with this value. Swift is a very strict language, so it usually wouldn't let me do these things, but IB actions run on the Objective-C runtime and Objective-C just doesn't care if I do stuff like this. So the important thing to take away from this is that we don't have to write any special code to detect all of the user interactions here. UI kit and UI controls just take care of all of that for us. And we don't have to use just storyboards for this. I can do everything programmatically. So let's say I wanted to create a button. When I create a UI button, I have to specify the type of button that I wanna create. And the default push button with a label or an image is just the system button. Then I can set the title of the button and I'm gonna get back to this method in a little bit. Uh, then I can set the frame because it's a UI view and then add it as a sub view. And if I run this, we should see a button that has the text push me uh, just at the top there, right? So that's my button. Now, if I wanna add an action to this button from my storyboard, I drag the blue line. But if I wanna do it from code, it's a little bit different. So I have to use this method called add target which has three options it's expecting. The last option, the UI control dot event, is the type of event we wanna to listen to. So in a buttons case, that's usually gonna to be touch up inside. Then the selector is the method that we wanna get called when this touch up inside event actually happens. So if I just create a method here, I'll call it uh, do another thing. And I wanna pass that in here, but this is actually expecting a selector. So I have to wrap it in this hashtag selector thing. And then the target is the instance of the object that that method exists on, uh, which in this case is the current view controller. And this is gonna complain because I haven't marked this with at obj C, which stands for objective C. And this is all a bit weird because this is all coming from object, yeah. And this all looks a bit weird because this is all coming from Objective-C. If this was written in Swift, it would probably look more like this. Where we would just add the target for the specific event and then pass it a closure. But UI buttons have existed since 2008. The idea of closures in Objective-C didn't exist till 2011, and Swift wasn't invented until 2014. So this is what our code used to look like when we had to program in Objective-C. Actually, hold on. Yeah. 
this is what our code used to look like. So at least it's an improvement on that. But as much as we try to program in Swift and forget about Objective-C, UIKit is still implemented in Objective-C. So it still seeps through the cracks and we still see little bits of Objective-C pop up. Now, as we transition to Swift UI, we're gonna see much less Objective-C. But for now, until Swift UI is adopted into the mainstream, we're gonna see a lot of these Objective-C things come up now and again. So back to this code here, I've now got a button that should print out pushed every time it's pushed. And back to this line of code right here, because when I wanna set the title on the button, it's really just gonna set the text on a UI label within the button. But I have to set it up this weird way, where I'm passing in a string and this UI control dot state. And the reason for this is that a button can be in one of several states and it can change its appearance based on its current state. So when we have a button just on the screen like this, it's in its normal state. But if I push a button down like this, it's actually in a highlighted state. And I might wanna define what the text should be, whether it's in the normal or highlighted or one of its other states. So if I set push me for the normal state, that's just gonna get used for every state. But I could also say, um, see we're gonna set the label to be pushed when the control state is highlighted. And now depending on whether I'm pushing down on the button or not, the label's text will actually change just like that. So when you update a property on a UI control that changes the way it appears, you may have to call one of these methods to set that for a particular state. And for a button, these would be the same type of methods if I wanted to set the image for a button. What's really cool, again, just like the actions, is that we don't have to write extra code to implement this logic. We just have to set these states and it will just get taken care of for us when the user interacts with the button. And we can also change these states programmatically. For example, I could set the button to be highlighted by setting its is highlighted property to true, but this is much less common than just letting UIKit handle that for us. So a UI control is a subclass of a UI view that detects user interactions and notifies our code when something interesting happens, like a button is pushed or a slider's value is changed. Controls also have a control state that can change based on how the user is interacting with that control. And then the control's appearance can be changed based on that state. As always, leave any questions in the comments and stay tuned for more videos on iOS development.